Hey guys, welcome to another synthesis tutorial video. In this video, we're focusing on a comb filter. So we're gonna be creating a chorus effect, a flanger effect, and we're also gonna be doing some basic physical modeling. So we're gonna emulate a plucked string like a guitar and also a flute like a wind instrument of any kind. And this is the kind of sounds you're gonna get just as a preview. Here's a sort of string sound. And here's an example of the flute sound we'll be making. And what's really interesting about these two sounds is that no oscillators were used. We're only using noise and a filter, believe it or not. And we're getting these kind of pitched instruments. So let's get started. Uh, the comb filter is based on a delay line. And a delay line is effectively, you can think of it like a delay pedal or delay echo effect. The delays are so short that you can't actually perceive the difference or like you can't hear the echoes. Uh, instead, you use it to for its properties to uh, create things like chorus or flanger effects, which effectively are just really short delays where you modulate the delay time. But then you can also use it as a building block for physical modeling. It's effectively a, a type of synthesis where you're trying to model physical instruments. All right, let's start off with the chorus. I've initialized the basic patch here. So we have just the sawtooth wave. You go to your filter section and we choose the type pick comb plus here. And then the cutoff frequency and the resonance actually control the parameters of the delay line. So the cutoff frequency uh, controls the delay time and the resonance controls the feedback cycle. So we want to move the cutoff frequency to somewhere in the middle so that we have some range for modulation. And the key here is going to be modulating this uh, cutoff frequency, which translates to the delay time. <laughs> You can already hear that chorusy effect. You assign that to modulation. So for our modulation source, we have LFO1. And then we're going to go into our LFO page and change the rate and the shape. So I'm going to pick a triangle wave and reduce the speed. So we can go back to our filter and change the mod amount from subtle to extreme. The other cool thing we can do is we can have two filters running in parallel here. For each oscillator, you can pick how much percentage goes to one filter or the other. Right now, it's all going to filter one. But if I change my frequency or my oscillator to go 50%, so we're going to choose center here. What this means is that it's equally going into filter one and filter two. And I have filter one and filter two configured to go in parallel. So I'm going to pick a comb filter for filter two as well. And similarly, I'm going to pick sort of a middle-ish cutoff frequency and I'm going to set the same kind of modulation. So we're going to pick LFO1. And then one cool thing we can do is pan them left and right. Filter one all the way to the left and move it all the way to the right. And now we're going to get a stereo effect with slightly different modulation. <laughs> To get a flanger, it's basically the exact same thing, except you want to increase the resonance of the comb filter. Keep the exact same settings. I'm just going to go here and crank my resonance up. Whoa, that's a little too insane. I mean, it's a little more intense than a flanger sound, but it's still a kind of a cool sound. It's got these weird warbly effects and it, everything is being panned left and right. So you're getting this really rich. And of course, I'm just using a standard saw wave, but we can pick different, well, like a wavetable or something. All right, so I've initialized the basic patch. We just have our sawtooth again. I'm actually going to turn off the oscillator, believe it or not. So the way to get the physical modeling string sound, it, the sound is not dependent on the source that you feed through the filter. It's actually the filter itself that self oscillates it or goes into feedback. And that's what produces the pitch. And then you control the pitch of the sound by changing the delay time of the filter. So you can experiment by even running something like a noise source with no pitch and you'll still get a guitar sound out of it. So it's almost magic when you first do it. It's kind of a cool trick. So Right now, I've turned off all my oscillators. 
So let's go to our filter. We'll keep it simple, just use one filter. And you can pick the comb plus to get more string type sounds and comb minus to get more tube uh, type sounds. What you wanna do is increase uh, key tracking to 100%. What this means is that the keyboard will perfectly track the cutoff frequency of the filter, which in this case maps to the delay time. And this will allow us to play melodies. And the next thing we wanna do is set a cutoff frequency. So the cutoff frequency has kind of special values that map to different oscillator octave ranges. And you can find a list of these in the manual. But for example, for this type of filter, we set the cutoff frequency to 47 if we want an eight foot oscillator. And then we wanna crank the resonance pretty high, somewhere in the hundreds. Currently, we don't have any sounds going through the filter. I'm gonna to go to the global section of the oscillators and increase the noise. And now we're getting that sort of guitar sound, but you can tell that the sound is actually pitched and tracking properly, even though we're just feeding noise into it. And now we can go and tweak it if we go to the amp envelope and create more of like a plucky sound. We can add some reverb just to add a bit of ambience. And then we can pick the other comb filter type. We can go to comb minus. So in this case, we get more of a flute uh, simulation. The other cool thing we can do is add some vibrato, except in this case, if you remember, we're using noise through the filter, so there's no actual oscillator. So the way to change the pitch of this sound is by controlling the cutoff frequency, which controls the delay time. So I've added LFO1 modulation of the filter one cutoff frequency, uh, which will give us pitch modulation, which effectively is vibrato, which I can control with the mod wheel here. So if you'll notice like the amp envelope has a lot to do with creating the illusion of the sound. So for the flute, a slow attack made more sense. And then when you switch to the string one, a quick attack makes more sense with a short decay. All right, hopefully that gives you an interesting idea of how to use a comb filter. So to recap, we used it to create a chorus effect, to create a flanger effect. We used it to simulate sort of a flute body and also a very simple model of a resonating or vibrating string. So hopefully that was interesting. Make sure to like to subscribe if you want to stay up to date for more videos like this. I'm definitely gonna do more uh, kind of synthesis tutorials again now that I've uh, got the Blofeld here, which allows me to explore different kinds of synthesis. So I'm gonna try to explore stuff outside of the standard traditional uh, subtractive patches. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys in the next one.